Thanks for joining me as we paint a drug picture of the Biguanides. Metformin is the only currently available Biguanide and is on the World Health Organization's list of most essential medications. Metformin is a hypoglycemic agent or an anti-diabetic agent. It is relatively well tolerated and it's considered the first line treatment for the treatment of diabetes type 2 after, of course, you've done everything that you can with diet therapy and exercise therapy. It's particularly good in people who are type 2 diabetics and overweight. So how does metformin work? The primary way in which metformin works is at the le level of the liver, and at the level of the liver, it decreases what we call gluconeogenesis. And remember from physiology that gluconeogenesis is the formation of new glucose from things like proteins and fats. In addition to suppressing the hepatic production of new glucose, in other words, the liver gluconeogenesis, one of the other actions is of metformin is to increase insulin sensitivity. And what does that mean? increase insulin sensitivity. Well, in type 2 diabetics, their problem is not normally that they have too little insulin, like in type 1 diabetics. Their problem is usually that they have a condition called insulin resistance or insulin insensitivity. Now, metformin's hypothesized action in decreasing uh, insulin resistance is actually that it increases the binding of the insulin. And if it's increasing the binding of the insulin, it's harder to actually get that off. It gives more messages over to the cell and then more GLUT4 transport carrier molecules. And finally, there's one last a mechanism by which metformin works, and that is to slightly decrease uh, the absorption rate of glucose from the gastrointestinal tract. Metformin is generally well tolerated, except for the rare complication of lactic acidosis. Lactic acidosis is very rare in metformin, whereas the previous biguanides that was a fairly common uh, complication, and it's oftentimes fatal. So a couple of the other biguanides actually had to be taken off the market because of lactic acidosis. Metformin only seems to have that problem when it's associated with other risk factors. So it's really important that you make sure that that person is, does not have those other risk factors one of the risk factors is kidney dysfunction. So what you'll have to do is make sure that the person has uh, good levels of creatinine. So creatinine levels within the normal range. That gives you a general idea of what the kidney function is like. Uh, take the liver enzymes, make sure that they don't have liver dysfunction. And also, quiz them about their alcohol consumption, making sure that they don't have excess amounts of alcohol during the time that they're taking the metformin. Metformin is actually called a hypoglycemic drug, but it doesn't actually cause hypoglycemia. So that's not one of the side effects. That's really good. Uh, it, sometimes authors actually call it a euglycemic agent because it normalizes the blood sugars rather than actually puts them below the level that they should be. And uh, the other common side effects though are diarrhea, nausea, and abdominal pain. But if the person 
who is taking metformin actually takes the metformin along with their meals, these common side effects should be lessened or not experienced at all. Just a couple other notes. Uh, one is that metformin should not be used in pregnancy. We just don't know enough. We don't have enough data for that, to, for recommendation of metformin during pregnancy. Insulin therapy is the one that's recommended for uh, women who are pregnant and have diabetes. And then finally, metformin is also used in a condition called polycystic ovarian syndrome.